we would ask that all phones are put on silent and to remind you that flash photography is not permitted during the show as we have dedicated photographers capturing the evening for you. If a phone is seen filming the show, we are not responsible if it disappears. This area is a smoke-free zone. However, if you wish to do so, please head to the designated area in that direction, where you are free to roll up as much as you so desire. We hope you enjoy tonight's performance by Josh Norbido, The Illusionist. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Are you good? Yeah. All right. Hey, look, we have our own little private area tonight. It's so good to see you all, and I'll share around that role later. Hey, look, thanks for coming out tonight. It means more than you know, and what a special day being here on Valentine's Day as well. I think there's a little extra magic in the air. Who's here celebrating Valentine's Day? Who just likes magic? Great. Who doesn't know how they ended up here? <laughs> that actually happens at a magic show. Yeah. You just get dragged along normally. So look, we have, there's so much I want to show you in such a short amount of time. So I'm going to start with something that has evolved over time. Okay. So this is something that first began as a, an effect using cars and has now evolved to using what I can simply call uh, flash cars or blank cards, if you will. So these essentially are just pieces of cardboard, all blank. And you might ask, what magic can you do with these? But I want to show you something that first, again, started as a card trick and now has just become even more than that. Now, they are blank, but obviously you want to make sure this is all fair. So my friend is here. Would you mind inspecting them? You can shuffle them up if you'd like as well. Just make sure they are what they should be. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I shuffling a deck that's all the same? <laughs> And the answer is it kills 20 seconds, okay? So <laughs> if you're done, I'll take them back. And you can actually check that they're all there. Listen. 52? Like Great. Okay, good. Brilliant. Here's the idea, okay? All blank, but my friends, yes. would you mind just taking out one of our blank cards? Yes. Do you want that one? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Why are we questioning that? They're all the same. <laughs> now, here's the idea. Now, there's a problem. The way this started when these were actually printed cards was like this. Okay? Have a look at your card. Show everyone. <laughs> Place it back into the deck for me. And look, I won't move. Your card jumps to the top of the deck. <laughs> You can try it. <laughs> but just look right here. Sleep. Not yet, okay? But look, that actually happened, but you can't tell that happened because you have what we call um, muggle eyes. So we're going to do this again, but we're going to mark your card so that you know this one from all the rest. So I'll give you a card back. What was your name? David. David. Everyone say, hi, David. Hi, David. David, they love you. Okay. Now here's the thing, David. You're going to sign this card. Yep. I want you to take up as much of the card as you can. So that way it's very distinct when we see it again. Let me just grab that one as well. Thank you. <laughs> All done? Take a sniff and I'll take the pen back. <laughs> he did it! All right. So good. <laughs> Everyone's going to be high by the end of this. So now show everyone the way you've signed that card. And David, this is obviously you've signed this just now. We haven't actually met before, so we know that this is legit. Okay, so here's the idea now. So now we have one card that will stand out amongst the other 51 cards. Okay, so the idea is this. If I place this into the pack, it doesn't matter which card I now show you because you'll only believe it's David's when you see David's name. So if you watch, it becomes a little bit more magical when I now show you we get our magical moment. Right? I know at the back, you're like, what the hell? It's because you blinked, okay? So look, let me do it again. I'll do it a little bit quicker. So if we do it quicker, we'll send it back into the center, we'll give it a second, and it should jump back to the top just the same. Just calm down. Now, here's the thing. 
When I was younger, when I first started doing this, my friends used to say that I had ninja hands. And I think what they meant was that I could do some kind of move that would shoot the card to the top really quickly, some kind of fast ninja thing that the eyes couldn't see. Obviously, I can't do that. But what I like to think of this is that it's not the card that's able to move through the deck, but rather it's the ink that can move through the cards. If we are at Hogwarts, that is how I would expect this to happen. <laughs> Why are you laughing? So if you could do that, you would just take any card and you would simply shake the ink from the deck to that card whenever <laughs> you want it. Now, can you just, my friend, uh, can you just check that, just feel this card, make sure it's not a stamp or something, it really is on there, yes? Oh, good. Okay, and at the back as well, just check that out. Yep. Seems legit, good, I'll pay you later. But here's the thing, <laughs> if you rub the card this way, let me do it so you guys can see, if you rub the card this way, you can get the ink to come off for a second. Now my friend with his hands crossed, because you don't believe this, just hold on to that for a second. Can you see David's signature? You literally have him in the palm of your hands. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, obviously, you can't because there's no canvas behind it. So if we take a card and we go back over that spot, we should be able to get our signature to come back once again. Yes, boy. Right? Cool. Any questions or that's fine? Let me show you one last time, okay? Now, now you wrote your signature very nicely, but let me uh, write my, oh, he's gone, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna write my name on a card as well to show you a little bit more visually the ink jumping, because that is what is happening here. So I'm gonna write my name on here. Any other left-handers in the room? A few of us, all right. Just us and uh, Justin Bieber, left-handed. Here we go, so this is me, Josh Nobito Illusionist. But if it's easier for you to remember, uh, you can remember it as joshnobito.com, okay? Yes. Or Instagram would be at joshnobito, okay? So on this side has my name, on this side looks like every other card that we started with. But for this, can I give these to you? We're just going to use our two cards for this. Perfect. But I'm gonna leave my mind face up so you see this happen. Okay, one, two, three, but wait. Now that the ink has jumped, we now no longer need this card because David and I now share the same card. And that is one card and one card only. David, you can check it out. Make sure it is just one card. It will, it will forever stay like that. And that's for you, my friend, as a souvenir. And everyone is welcome to come up and examine that from David because he will have it with him. Is that okay? Everyone give David a big round of applause. All right. Let me get this up here. Now, what's, what's interesting is we actually have evolved this effect over time. Again, oh, you still have the, thank you. You sh did that like a magician. What are the odds? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see what's going on here. And the rest? Thank you for not showing off too much in the show. Thank you. So look, this, this actually has actually evolved again. So it first started with cards, then it evolved to blank cards. And then I realized it's really just about the ink. It's not even to do with the cards themselves. So I wanted to take it even a step further tonight. Okay. Now you guys have been so intently watching. It's been amazing. Would you mind if I borrowed you just for a second? Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, so join me. Everyone will give you a big round of applause. As you come up. Yeah, yeah, both of you come up. And your name? David. David and Yolanda. Yolanda, okay, let's, all right. So we'll do this. If you want to swap, so David, you're gonna stand just here. Now, were you one of the ones that said you were, le were left-handed? No. Okay, good. So what you're gonna do is, your outer hand, you're gonna close it. You guys are gonna hold hands in the center. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Just like normal? So normally is fine. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, is it just an online dating situation normally? Or? Okay. And then your hand is going to be face up. Okay. Here is the idea. This is what we call in the business magic paper. 
or wish paper. Okay. I'm going to draw a simple design onto here that you may recognize. Okay, let me draw it first and then I'll show you. Okay. Yes, you see that? Ah. Oh. Yeah. Just for today. I planned this. I knew it would be on a Valentine's Day. So we have a love heart. Obviously, that can symbolize the love you have for one another, you know, the love of Valentine's Day. It also, it also can mean good fortune. And the idea is that we're going to transfer this good fortune to you guys. Okay. So we'll start here. Here we go. So we're going to start with David's hand. Did you feel anything? No. Do you know what that means? No. It means it was done well. Okay. <laughs> it travels up David's arm, across his broad shoulders, down your arm, and hopefully across to Yolanda's left hand, the furthest away distance. You had your hand closed the whole time. Yeah. Go ahead, turn it over. No way. <laughs> and slowly open. <gasps> and show the audience <gasps> and give her a massive round of applause. Yeah, that's the best day of my life. I'll just let you simmer in that for a second. And that is now a tattoo forever, so you're welcome. And, um, yeah, you guys can go back to your seat or stand there and hold hands. I feel like I've helped in some way. Awesome. Great. <laughs> the, the fire from that just obviously got me, so, you know, we're in Australia. Love it. So, crazy, right? And again, Feel free to come around and check Yolanda's hand as well as David's item. This is all fun. The best thing about magic in this format is that you're so close to everything, exactly, that you can uh, examine things, you can talk about it afterwards, you can sort of come together and do that. That's beautiful. Now we're going to try a little game of trust. Okay? In the audience, just put your hands up if you have your wallet with you tonight. Okay. Keep, you're not sure, David. You're like, I might have it up, but I don't know how this is going to go. Keep your hand up if you have your wallet and you have some money in your wallet. Most people, great. And then, David's gone. He's like, actually, no. <laughs> PayPal just went out. Okay. And finally, if you have some paper money, like, let's, it's funnier the higher of a note you go. So if you have a $50 note with you, and a few people do. Okay, great. So if one, if you guys could take it out, and I'll just take whoever can get it out the quickest, um, we'll use that. Done. Now, David, we put we put you through a lot, so we might share the love, but I appreciate that so much. Okay. Sometimes I carry one on me just in case, but you have. Okay, and oh, you have one. This will actually be better. Okay. And your name? Dan. Dan. Everyone say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Before you give me that note, Dan. I'm going to give you a pen and I just want you to actually sign your name along one of the ends of that. Um, you can still spend it as normal, don't worry. But it just ensures that the same note you see at the end of this routine is the same one that we start with. <laughs> All done? Okay, take a sniff and I'll grab the pen back. Did you go to sniff the money? You just love the smell of money. Okay. Now you all saw that Dan gave me his money. Thank you. And that is the trust exercise. Any questions? You're laughing now. That's right. Here's, but here's actually what we're going to try. Do you still have your wallet with you? Okay, take out your wallet because this is actually the amazing thing. Now, um, just so you guys can see as well, you can see the uh, signature just here, very faint. Actually, I'll turn it the right way up. Yes, just here. Yeah. Very faint, but Dan will be able to recognize it again, just like this. So you know it is still here right now. Now, Dan, you have your wallet. I want you to hold it in your palm like this. Did you just put it away again? You have to teach him how to, okay. Perfect, okay, okay. This is impossible. Your money is going to disappear in a moment and reappear in an impossible location. Would you be impressed if I can get this to magically disappear and reappear in your wallet? 100%. 100%. Hell yeah. Okay. Are you sure of... Yes? Now, to make it vanish, 
we're going to use our friend the magic paper. But what's interesting is uh, instead of using a small amount like before, with a large amount like this, it's fun. It's fun. Your wallet is there. Check this out. Either way, this is going to be good. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry, David. <laughs> Did you feel something? Just say yes. 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 Go ahead, open up the wallet. Have a look inside. Tell us, is there a 50 in there? No. Huh? Should I say yes? Yeah, just say yes. Yeah. yeah, all right, thank you. Next trick, all right, here we go. And um, there really isn't um, a 50 in there. You know what, I just had a, an idea. It actually went into your shirt. So just stand up and take your shirt off for me. And, no, I'm kidding. What's actually happened is, I said it would go into an impossible location, but if you think about it, you have had your wallet out, and I took the money from you. It is possible that I could have sleight of hand the money back into your wallet. I could have done some kind of switch, put it back in. I showed you the signature, but you don't know that's the same one he signed, right? But I could have put it back in there. There's not really that impossible. What is more impossible is to be ending up in some way that has been in your view the whole time. Here we have a lovely ball of yarn that's been attached to the roof since you guys came in. I'm going to pass this thread uh, to you, John. And can you pass it back? And everyone just kind of keep grabbing it and keep moving back. I'll just turn my mic back on here and keep pulling it, keep going. And I'll just, I'm just going to put my hand on top so that it can't jump out. But you'll notice that as it gets smaller and smaller, something may start to appear inside. And we're almost there. And that's it. Okay. And would you mind just to hold on to that for me? And can you tell me what that is? What it appears to be? $50 note. It appears to be a $50 yeah. note. Thanks. You're not impressed? No. <laughs> I think what we need is, you can put your wallet away down, but everyone will give you a big round of applause as you come up to actually examine this for us. Let's give them a big round of applause. Come on up. Yeah. Give it a nice stretch here. So, $50. You signed it. We have not met before. No. Okay, go ahead and pull out the note from... It's not there. Go ahead, open it up, and tell us, my friend, is that your same 50? Hold it up, show them the yes. signature. Yes. And it is! Wow. You're brilliant, my friend. Wow. Any questions? Okay, let me see this off to the side here. <laughs> now, uh, feel free to play with this string all night if you like. Um, let me just break that maybe so it doesn't get in your way. Perfect. <laughs> Who's got a hundred? Who's got a hundred? <laughs> this will be amazing. You... Okay. Well, I brought with me one of my favorite toys or favorite puzzles rather. This here... Oh, you like them. Rubik's Cubes. Great. One of the most sold puzzles in the world. There's over 53 quintillion different ways you can mix a cube. It's actually insane. But for me, what's more fun is instead of just trying to solve a cube, what's a lot more fun is when you can find interesting ways to actually do the solve itself. Right. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to know how that's possible to learn, okay? There's a lot of... Uh, rituals and sacrifices to have this kind of power. But what I'd love to show you guys is a way that you can solve your own cube. Would you like to learn? Yeah. Okay. So let's share the love a little bit here. Can I give this to you, my friends? Yep. In your name? Paul. Uh? Paul. Paul. Everyone say hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul, they love you. Paul, go ahead and mix up that cube as much as you can. Just don't change the order of the colors, for God's sake. 
It's an old joke, but I love it. Okay. Here's how you're going to solve this cube. First, you need a mixed up cube. You also need a bag of mystery. Fun fact, has anyone seen this clip done on Australia's Got Talent when I was on the show? This is the same bag. <laughs> exact same bag. Because it's a magic bag, of course. Now, uh, you're still going? Good, no, no worries. Just don't take more than 30 minutes, please. All done, Paul? Thank you. I'll grab the cube back. Done a good job at mixing that. Okay. Here's what you do. You place the cube into the bag of mystery. You do need uh, some kind of magic word. And then you would wave your hand, give it a magical snap, and with any luck, you can show them the mixed cube. Yep. A few groans, and so you should. <clears throat> Obviously, when you do this at home, uh, you don't want to show them what else is inside the bag, right? Because I'm trying to like, get rid of it right now, but I can't. Uh, if you let them see inside the bag, they'll see another <laughs> mixed cube. Uh, in fact, there is one last thing in this bag, and uh, my hands are empty. This gentleman just here. Okay, looks empty, right? Yep. This will freak you out. There's a few of them. Name me any number between one and five. Five. Are you sure? Yep. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Again, bad joke, but you'll all use it at work, and you're welcome. So, so here's the thing, so, right? So don't show them that. Now, the reason why I love doing magic with these, these, these kind of objects is because, has anyone ever watched a cube solving competition before? You have? Very fast, right? The problem is that the only entertaining bit of that is seeing the person who can do it the fastest. Because anyone else, is just not as good because, and the only reason for that is because all they're trying to do is to solve it into this position where they're all the, the same side, like all the sides are solved. But what I think would be more fun is why isn't the challenge to solve it into a really interesting design of a love heart or each center being a different color? And the best way to explain that is that there's a viral clip going around at the moment. The most viral Rubik's Cube clip at the moment is a guy in Asia, a 12-year-old, juggling three mixed-up cubes and solving them as he's juggling them. Now, he takes 50 times longer than the fastest speed cuber, but he's got the most views because he's doing something like super different and, and interesting. So I'm not a 12-year-old that was born in Asia, but I'm trying to develop a way to do something that's still of that nature. Now, I'm going to try to do this without looking at the cube, so to do that, I'm going to lock eyes with my handsome friend here. And we'll see how we go. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to look at you, okay? Don't worry if it gets awkward. It's all necessary. I'm good, man. Oh, you're good? Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. We don't even need the trick. That should be about it. Okay. Did I look away at all? I didn't look away. Now this doesn't seem like much until we bring it back to our friend Paul. And if we have a look at our cube, the front panel exactly the same. Thank you. White, green, blue, green, yellow, red, orange, yellow, and blue. If we again look at the second side, we again have a perfect match. Same with the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the six, all a perfect match. Now, if anyone knows how to solve them now, I'd love to know. No, so now that you know all of this, okay, I'm gonna give one of you uh, the power to do this. One of you is gonna come up here and solve it instantly. And I think it would be best if um, our lovely lady here, would you mind helping just for a moment? Again, everyone will give you a big round of applause as you come up. How are you? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. So, if you want to just come just a little bit back there and just stand forward, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be able to solve this cube yourself. Okay. But you're going to mix it a little bit differently to me. Okay. So, instead of mixing it like this in front of you, like this, you're going to mix it behind your back, 
but like this. Okay. So hands behind your back. Uh, I'll pass this to you. Let me know once you have got it. Yeah. Okay. So start mixing it, and when you're ready, bring it out in front. And show the audience, hold it up. A soft cue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Crazy, right? This is my life. This is my life. Okay. So when I first started doing magic, a lot of what I love to do is close-up magic. And Actually, at the end of tonight, I want to show you a piece that's really, really close up. Um, but for the moment, I want to show you something that, um, as magicians, we all start with learning. Uh, there are two things. We start learning magic with cards, and the other thing is we start learning magic with a man purse. <laughs> or rather, what's inside <laughs> being uh, some coins. Now, you guys might not know what these are anymore, but these are Australian currency. We normally use notes or our cards now, but we have 40 cents. Okay. So here's the idea. If you just start with one coin, okay, you can warm it up just a little bit. The tricky thing is with one coin, it is hard to actually keep track of where that coin goes, right? <laughs> Okay. Especially even when you know where it is and you watch really closely with the light, it'll look like it's gone. You can actually throw it and follow it all the way till it lands in the other hand as well. <laughs> Craziest thing ever. Now here's the cool thing. If you introduce two coins, you would think it's harder to follow now because there's two things to watch. But I'm going to do this very slowly for you. Because this, just like with the cards I showed you at the start, has evolved over time as well. You see, the way we used to do this effect was that you would, have, you would have coins in your hand, you would close them, you would make a fist, and you would do a magical gesture, and you would have one coin jump from one place to the other. That is the right word for that, yes. <laughs> but the problem with that is you're not seeing the magic happen because the hands are closed at that moment. So what's better is if you keep it up at eye level and you actually can see the magic happen. So if I can keep this in your view, you should be able to see the coin go from one place and arrive in the other place. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but now here's a spin out. Here's a really spin out thing, okay? Consider this. It travels across, but you don't see it go across, right? Isn't that a weird thing? So you're not seeing it go, but it goes. Imagine if it was the opposite way, which means you see it go, but it doesn't go. So what I mean is, if you watch the coin, you'll, you'll swear you see it go across, but it actually won't <laughs> go across at all. But that's not really normal. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The way it's supposed to be is that you would take the coin, you would throw it, and it would go across to one side. <laughs> It's amazing that just two little objects that we keep on us have so much possibility to entertain uh, that we overlook. So I just wanted to share that with you. But now is for the real stuff, okay? Up until now, sleight of hand, bit of luck, bit of magic. But I want to try something a little crazier with you. You guys are aware of the idea of mind reading, yes? Right? Whatever that means to you. So that could mean actually reading a thought from your mind. That could mean uh, what we call mentalism, where you can sort of body read answers that people give off you if you've watched the mentalist show. Well, I want to play with that idea, but I want to take this somewhere that normally isn't done, okay? Instead of trying to just read your mind, I want to play a game of actually being able to inject thoughts into each other's mind. So I don't want to just do that with you sending me a thought. I want to be able to send you a thought and you be able to say what it is. Sounds crazy, but this is what we're gonna try. Now, uh, this lovely lady at the back. Hello. Hi. We have not met before. No. Thanks for coming. Um, do you have a phone with you? Yes. Could you grab it out for a moment? And 
The reason I'm using your phone is so that I can access a lot of things to search in a moment, but also it's your phone, it's not like anyone else has touched it before then, yes? Yeah. Okay. And what was your name? Francesca. Francesca, lovely name. Uh, would you mind coming up just for a moment and everyone will give you a warm welcome. <laughs> now here's what we're going to do, Francesca. To start with, I'm actually going to get you to stand at the back but in the center. Um, but I'll take your phone and I'll explain how we're going to do this. So could you unlock it for me? I'm not a mind reader. I'll take do you, you. Want <laughs> data? Just data would be good. Yeah. Thank you. you and, um, and just your Westpac accounts. <laughs> no, just your internet browser like Google. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to go to Google. So if you wouldn't mind just standing just there. Okay. So I'm going to search a simple object. Yeah. It'll be random, and you won't know why you're thinking of it. But I'm going to commit to it on here, and then uh, I'll show you in a second. So, yeah. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to send you the object. So clear your mind. You're just going to literally have the name of a random kind of object, like chair or something, pop into your mind. Okay? You won't know why. Just look at me. One, two, three. Could you name the object that popped in your head? Just say something. Any, any random object. A stool. Okay, a stool. That seems like so planted and obvious. But you could have said anything, yes? You could have. It's just that that's an easy thing for me to send to you. And uh, if you want to come forward and, and actually show them what I searched, you'll be able to... A stool. And show them. Yeah, of course. A stool. Oh my God. Show them. The, yeah, of course. So it seems so obvious, but you actually got it 100% right. Now, don't go just yet. Because that works so well, I mean, you can turn your phone off if you like now. We're going to actually try this the opposite way. Okay. So now you're going to get a thought, which will make random, and you're going to send that to me. Okay. okay. So... Um, you can sit your phone down, or you can. I can make it vanish again, like at the start, put whatever it back you like. Here. Okay, yep, yeah, put it back there, and then join me at the front here. Now tell me, Francesca, do you do much reading at all? Textbooks. Textbooks? Good. So sit the phone down, and then come back. <laughs> okay, great. That was weird, right? Still perfect. That was crazy. So here's the thing uh, Time Magazine. How many words, Francesca, would you say are on a magazine of this size? 100,000. 100,000, that's probably accurate. There's a lot of words. A lot of random words, because you probably haven't read this particular edition. No. Right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a random page on here, okay. and then we're going to whittle our way down. Okay. So this first part, not a big deal, but I'm just going to riffle down the side, and at some point, just say stop. Okay? Go for it. Here? Yeah. Okay. Now this one, this side appears to have the most text. Would you agree? Yeah. So we'll tear this one out. Now can you just confirm that I am actually tearing? It's not like a switching in a page or something. And let me try and keep this as neat as I possibly can. And can you just hold the end and can you complete the tear for me? Okay. Sorry. Done. Mm -hmm. You guys can read this later if you like. So for the, for the rest of this, I'm going to face away from you, but I'm going to direct and instruct what I want you to do, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Hold the paper long ways like this with your hands to either side, and I want you to tear it in half, but leave a little bit untorn at the bottom. So go ahead and let me know once you're at that spot. You there? Yeah. Now, to complete the tear, I need you to make the following sounds when you're ready. <laughs> Amazing. Hold a piece in either hand, and in a moment, you're going to drop one of those pieces. It is up to you. It is a free choice. All I'm going to say is just drop the piece that feels right to you, and you'll be left with one piece. Okay? But make sure it's random. Go ahead, drop one of those pieces. Have you done that? Okay. okay. The piece you still have, hold it long ways again. Tear it down the center, leaving that little bit at the bottom. 
and then you know what to do. <laughs> it gets funnier every time, and I love that you got more enthusiastic. So again, hold a piece in either hand. In a moment, you're going to drop one of those pieces, but just know most people will drop the same piece again. So you can be another statistic, or you can be your own person, Francesca, but it's your choice. So go ahead and drop one of those pieces. Go ahead. Classic. Go ahead. Okay, the last time, hold it long ways again. Go ahead and tear that in half. You know all the. You know what to do. Yes. It's a good show when you get three books. Okay. Go ahead. Hold them in either hand and just drop the piece that feels right to you. Your choice. No influencing. Go ahead. All done. Yeah. So. We have started with a, a whole magazine that started with 100,000 words, and we're now down to just mi maybe 100 words. I'm going to stand over here, and if you want to just move a little bit further back, so it's not possible for me with this blinding light to read anything on there. From this moment, I want you to have a look on either side of that piece of paper, and you're going to, in a moment, commit one of those words to memory, just one word. But because this is one of the last effects we're doing, if you pick a small word like the or is or of, Bit of a crap ending. So try to pick a big interesting word. Let's say something with more than six letters. Okay. So have a look. Find one. Got it. You got it. Mm -hmm. So commit that word to memory. And it's not like the day of the week. Like it's not like the date that was on the top or anything. Yeah. Okay. And it's not like the title of the... No. Okay. So fold it up now. Fold it up. And just hide that piece of paper somewhere that I won't see it if I turn around. And if everyone laughs, it tells me where it's gone, but just let me know once it's done. Yeah. All done? Okay, great. Okay, come and join me here. So now, with your help as well, we're going to try and divine what Francesca's word is by you sending that word to us yeah. mentally. Yeah. So to first do this, you must clear your mind, okay? Okay, take a deep breath. Let it out. Okay. Just look at me. So imagine, not nothing out loud, but just imagine you are sending that word to me. Okay? Okay, don't move. Amazing. Yes or no? Be honest. Is your word pineapple? Actually, that was the one before. But you first thought of it. I first thought of it. And then, but the word you're thinking of is not that word. No. Just look at me again. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. I'll take what I can get, okay? I'll take what I can get. This stuff is hard. Here we go. Imagine the word is written on my hand, the full word, okay? Just imagine it's written, and you can, so, but it took you a while, which means it is a long word, but it's not too long that it takes up the whole word. You're nodding like, I'm correct, so thank you. That does help a little bit, but... Okay, tell me, do you prefer cereal or toast in the morning? Toast. So, That's crazy. <laughs> Okay, and if you were to say, and think about this for a second, if you were to say a word that has nothing to do with the word you're thinking of, just a totally random word, other than stool, what word would you say? Dog. What the <laughs> hell? Okay, I think it's going to be something like this. I'm going to show the audience what I've written, so don't say anything, and please don't say this out loud. I just want to show you that I am committing to this word, okay? I think it'll be something like this, I think. Okay. Now, this is the part of the show that frightens me, because it's all in your hands, out of 100,000 words. So, Francesca, in a big, loud, speaking voice, okay. what is the word that you picked? Sculpture. Sculpture, just like this? Yes! All right, let's give her a big round of applause. Oh my God. High five. Thank you so much. You can go back to your seats. Thank you, Francesca. Be careful what you think of because you do not know who is listening to your mind, okay? That is some crazy stuff. Now, 
I'll let you freak out about that later. Or now, that's fine. But tonight's show, everyone that has come up and helped legitimately is coming up to help and has not been spoken to before. This is what is so great about magic, is sharing this moment and things happening as you're actually seeing it. Now, I want to perform one more piece of magic, um, but what I want to do, because it's the last one, I want to create a, a sort of fun environment with this. And what I'd love to do is for all of you to be able to see as close as you can for this. So we're going to place our table right near the front. Thank you, Chris. This is Chris, ladies and gentlemen. He's done a great job so far. And I want everyone to be able to have the best view in the house. So what we're going to do is for all my friends that are at the back, I would love if you guys want to stand up and actually come to the front and you're going to stand on either side of me here. So go on, come up, come. That way you can see nice and close. You guys at the front, if you want, feel free to turn your chairs a little bit if you want so you can see really close as well. And for my friends at the back, if you guys want, if you can see really well, that's fine. But if, if you want to see better, I invite you to stand up so you can actually look straight down on what's about to happen. Okay, so come in, yeah, come, come in close. Brilliant. Yes, come in, come in. Okay, so what we're going to create is this fun vibe. Yeah, so perfect. If you're standing, you'll be able to see it. You guys at the front, you have the best view in the house. Okay. This is another experiment of mine, but what we're going to try to attempt is to create three moments of coincidence. Okay. You guys are going to make all the decisions along the way as well. So here's what we're going to try. Uh, my friend, can you shuffle cards a little bit? Like, have you handled cards a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to try is, could you... Now, let me just try and split these in half so it's more or less even. Can you come over to this pad and just sort of... Are you minding the groceries? No, thank you. <laughs> so come forward. And what you're going to do is you're going to just try and riffle these as best as you can together. Okay, so from the table, just try and riffle them together as best as you can. That's a sexy shuffle. <laughs> and just to show you what you've done there, I couldn't have planned that better. So go ahead and we'll just push these together. So now they are coalesced into one pack. Okay, we'll leave that there. My friend John, could you help as well? And uh, we'll make sure this again is nice and even so you get the best chance possible at, that looks about, okay. So go ahead, John. Again, you're just gonna try and riffle them together as best as you can. Again, it's not about being perfect. It's just so that we have your chosen order of shuffling. Okay. Now from here on, we can shuffle them a little bit more if we want to. We can, we can cut them. In fact, we should probably do it with this deck. Would you mind just cutting the deck? So you're just going to reach somewhere, cut it, and then complete the cut like that. So go ahead. Nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Random order to begin with, and now shuffled in a very unique way. To further mix it, we are now going to strip out one of the colors from the deck, so either the red cards or the black cards. Now, my friend is here. It is your choice. Should I strip out the red cards or black cards? Red. red. I'll strip out the red cards. So I'm going to try and do this as quickly as I can here. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> now, much like with the Rubik's Cube, where there's 53 or 43 quintillion different ways you can mix a cube, it's very much similar with the different patterns in which you can shuffle a deck into as well. Um, once, we, once we strip out the cards, it creates them into their own new pattern as well. And let's just leave these... Uh... In fact, do you want to just put these cards back into the box for me? Is that okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and take out these cards uh, as well. Okay. Now, is the, uh, is the Love Heart Tattoo still there? Is it still? Yeah, it's still there. It is still there? Yeah. Good. And our friend's money is still intact as well. You still have all your money? I hope so. You hope so? <laughs> I hope so too. Uh, you're still thinking of stool? I don't understand. You don't understand? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so stripping out the color that you wanted. Okay. So now we have, again, all, it should be all red. Okay. 
my friend, would you mind just putting these back into the box? And would you mind, now we'll just close this up, would you mind just hanging on to those for a second? Is that okay? And would you mind just hanging on to these ones? Is that fine? Okay. Thanks. Okay, great. So now we have our very shuffle cards in a new order. If we make any, any kind of magical moment happen from this, I'll be honest, even I'll be impressed. But I think at this point we're all friends, so it's okay to try this kind of stuff at the end. Here we go. You guys shuffled in whatever order. You chose which color to take out. At this point, I'm gonna ask my very well-built friend here to come forward and you're gonna cut one of these decks, okay? So you're gonna reach over and whatever, whichever deck you want, you're gonna cut it just like that, okay? It's up to you which one. Go ahead and just cut one of the decks. Amazing, thank you. That's what gets the applause, okay. So, my friend, you cut to here, right? You moved it, you cut to this card. So this is the card that we're going to work with. So, okay, so we can all see this, Queen of Spades. I'm gonna mark it, I'm gonna leave it face up and put the rest of the cards on top. So you know where in the deck it was cut from and you know which card. Now at this point, it doesn't mean anything, but if I start to take the cards from the top of the deck, this means nothing, right? We'll keep going again, this means nothing, this means nothing, and this means nothing. But what kind of coincidence could we have? If right here, where you guys shuffled, and you cut this pack, could we have our first coincidence? <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> Let's take this up a notch now, because I, I feel like we're there. My friend, could you now take these two different decks and riffle them together as well? Amazing. And just to show you this now new random order. Great. This is quite chaotic in the world of magic. You normally would never mix two decks together. But we're going to go ahead and do that. And now, and this is so beautiful, if I spread these out, look at that. It's, it's pretty. Would you mind just to put your finger on any one of these cards for me? This one right here? Yeah. We're not gonna look at it, but can you just slide it out and we'll just sit it like here, okay? And we're gonna do the same from this side, maybe with your help, but you can stay where you are. Uh, I'm just gonna drop the cards like this, mm -hmm. and at some point, just say stop, okay? okay? Go for it. Stop. Right here? Yep. Okay. So we'll sit this card down. Eerily, one's red and one is blue. Different color backs. Let's have a look at your card. Three of spades. And with any luck. Another three of spades. What is happening right now? Okay. Well done. So that is the second coincidence. Now I promised you three, and three you'll get. But to, to finish this, I'm just gonna split these back into their original or, uh, into the original colors, okay? Okay, brilliant. And if we lose track of them, obviously you know the order that they were in to begin with, yes? Because I don't think you've blinked since the start, which is perfect. <laughs> Just perfect. Here we go, so this should be all of them. Okay, great. Check this out. If I put these cards back, oh, sorry, if I put them back underneath their corresponding decks and I snap, the bottom of these decks are now the exact same. <laughs> uh, uh, no one's drunk, okay. But come in close, come in close, because not only are these the same, but the seven of clubs are also the same as well as the king of spades. 
the jack of spades are the same, the four of clubs are the same, the nine of clubs, the eight of clubs, every single card, the queen of clubs, the five of spades, ace of spades, ace of clubs, six of spades, are all the exact same, all the way down to our nine of spades. Three impossible coincidences. But wait, you still have the deck of cards and who, who has the other half? There are still some cards inside of them, right? You guys mixed them in the beginning, but yet uh, I got you to hold out the cards you wanted to take it out. Could you take out those cards and just sit them face up on the table here? Seven of diamonds and a seven of diamonds. What are the odds that we have a seven of diamonds, a two of diamonds, a king of hearts, a jack of diamonds, the jack of hearts, all a perfect match, eight of diamonds, six of diamonds, ace of diamonds, all the way down to the three of hearts, ten of hearts, all the way down to the very end to our ace of hearts and nine of diamonds. Guys, thank you so much. I'm Josh Levito, thank you so much for coming out and I look forward to seeing you all again. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.